We have arrived where the doomsayers never thought we would. I'm going to be president of this country, whether you like it or not. Greetings, Africa Zonga, Africa and the world. My name is Titus Tungu, and this is the EFF podcast. And as always, we're coming to you from the EFF headquarters, Winnie Madigizela Mandela House. On today's episode, I'll be touching base with uh, the founder and uh, CEO of uh, Drip Footwear, the most valuable and the fastest growing uh, sneaker brands in South Africa, Likau Siwana. <music> My brother, good morning and welcome. Hi, hi, how's it? Good, good. Um, good, good. Pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for the invitation, man. Sure. Yeah. So perhaps if we can just take a um, trip down memory lane uh, for the benefit of those people who have fond interest in knowing who is uh, Likau, where you were born, you know, the, the place where you attended your primary education. Yeah, so... Um, beautiful childhood memories, man. Mm -hmm. I was born in Mount Kwim Hospital in Limpopo, Polokwani, and um, had a stint stay in Tabakhon, Kamamabulo. Okay. Um, and my parents divorced when I was two in mm -hmm. 1990. Mm -hmm. So that made my mom, who was a stay home um, mm -hmm. wife, to actually you know, start fending for herself as well because she had sure. three kids then. Okay. And then she moved to Alexandra in um, a, a, a female hostel. Mm -hmm. So that's when, you know, we joined my mother in, in Gauteng, you know, during those times. Okay. And um, there were political instabilities in, in Alexandra. Yeah. You know, the ANC, the Inkat, um, you know, fights, you know, mm -hmm. happening during yeah. those times. Um, and we were young and, you know, um, there were a lot of fights during that time and my mom had to fled to Ivory Park. A, a lot of people confuse it with Tembisa. Oh, it's not Tembisa. <laughs> no, I no, thought no, so no. as well. No, no, <laughs> I thought no, it's in no, Tembisa. No, yeah, yeah. Where is Ivory, Ivory Park? Ivory Park is, is under um, Johannesburg. Okay. Yeah, it's Johannesburg Region 2. All right. So, yeah, Ivory Park is, is under Midrand and, and Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. But it's just next door to Tembisa, just because it's shakes. Oh. So, so they just associate. <laughs> yeah, with Tembisa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With, yeah with so you grew up in a shack? Yeah, Is that yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, the crazy thing is I was not born in a shack. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. um, I was born, you know, between my mom and my dad who mm -hmm. were married, you know. Um, 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 they had a beautiful home mm -hmm. in, in Limpopo and Polokwane. Mm -hmm. um, my dad used to work here in, in Gauteng okay. and my mom was back home, you know. Oh, yeah. you know a, a lot of us actually were raised like that. Yes, by the yeah, dad, yeah, you know, yeah. Dads will always mom. go in yeah, Gauteng, so, yeah. So the, the whole divorce prompted my mom to actually, you know, leave and come to Jovek um, and then to come and work for us. So that's when we introduced to these things yeah. of shakes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because so, in Limpopo there is yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, yeah. I'd, I'd be disrespecting my my, 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 my grandmother, you know, <laughs> sure. you know, if I said, you know, we're born in a shake. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but then, you know, from 1990 mm -hmm. um, up until actually 2018, yeah, that's when, you mm -hmm. know, we, we, we were staying in a shake. But mm -hmm. we moved from Alexandra to Ivory Park. You yeah. know, Ivory Park was also just a newly established township. You know, I think it was established in 1990. But okay. my mom um, moved us to Ivory Park in 1994. Yeah. So a lot of people had already settled in formal settlements. Sure. You know, and then um, they they saw, you know, a piece of land. Mm -hmm. Then um, they created shacks there, mm -hmm. you know, where I was raised, you okay. know, in Mafelanda Oonye, in formal settlement, mm -hmm. you know, in Ivory Park Extension 2. So I actually grew up there, you know, I have beautiful memories of actually growing up there. Yeah. And I'm who I am today because of that place mm. more than anything. You yeah. know, I have so many beautiful memories. And I think um, that's where the shift in mindset for me actually started. Yeah. You know, yeah. So how was your up up upbringing? How would you describe your upbringing? Uh, you talked about the separation of your yeah. parents. I, I, I honestly didn't even see the separation because I was obviously two. So my entire life, you know, I've never really, you know, had, you know, my dad around. You know, okay. I think I met him when I was 14, 15. And my upbringing was beautiful. Okay. You know, like um, we grew up in the townships, man. You know how townships are. Yeah. You know, like um, we create something out of nothing. Mm. 
you know, nara jala di tea, nara jala di keto, nara jala di kusha, nara jala di ali, di topo, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So I had a beautiful childhood. Mm-hmm. And I'm um, only, um, when I started high school, that's when I started being conscious about, you know, the real issues to say, actually, yeah. you know, like they're different people. There are sure. those who stay there, those who have TVs, you know. Mm-hmm. And Gohai, we never had a TV. We actually never had electricity. Mm-hmm. Actually, they don't even have electricity even now. Yeah. You know, speaking Wait, about in, it. Back in, in, in my Felanda, in my Felanda, park, oh, no, they yeah. don't. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. um, when we started visiting our friends who, who, are, who are staying in the formal sections, sure. you know, and then they have TVs there. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> so, but that, but I was actually in high school, sure. you know, but I, I enjoyed my, 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 my childhood. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a beautiful upbringing. Yeah. yeah. And what are some of the common activities that uh, the people in your neighborhood would engage in during school holidays and weekends? So um, those of us who had you know, mm-hmm. the homelands, you know, would, you know, travel back home, yeah. you know, to go spend, you know, Christmas, you know, yeah. June holidays, Paseka, yeah. you know, with our with our grandmothers, you know, and, and, and our and all the cousins, you know, be in, in one space, you know, mm-hmm. from Jobek, from all sure. the from, from all the walks of life. Mm-hmm. So most of the time during school holidays we just go to Limpopo or go to cousins and so on. So we always travel because it wasn't really you know a nice place to be in because yeah. you know our, our shack was so small you know and um later on my mom you know um my, my daughter uh, like my little sister sure. like my daughter my sure. little sister you know you know you know sure. came through as well she was born mm-hmm. so nearly four you know as uh, as bana mm-hmm. so you can imagine you know living in a cram shack yeah. you know we all just visit you know cousins you know yeah, yeah. um but more than anything, you know, sure. even during the, you know, school holidays, mm-hmm. um, we'd have fun in Ivory Park, you know, we mm-hmm. played games, you know, we networked, and we used to walk long distances. Mm. You know, sometimes we'd say, okay, there's a dam somewhere. There's actually a dam there by by, by waterfall in Midrand. Yeah. We used to walk from Ivory Park to go to that dam to go fish. Yeah. You know, and when we come back, they hit us because, yeah. dude, you know, what if there's a snake there? You know, Miss. And if it was about <laughs> 2000, or we used to walk, I mean, to walk even to school. Yeah. To, they 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 think that that this guy is insane because yeah, we yeah, used yeah, to yeah. to walk to school as well. Yeah, like you're saying, you know, in our generation, having a scholar transport was something like for uh, those who stay in the urban areas. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to walk. Actually, mm-hmm. I was doing an interview the other day, and then mm-hmm. I mentioned that in 1997, I actually um quit school. You know, I think I was in um, standard one. Okay, and and the, the the reason being that it was way too far for me. You know, mm-hmm. so I used to walk a long distance from Ivory Park. Those who know Ivory Park, Ivory Park Extension 2 to Extension 3, Gori yeah. Boni, a primary school. Mm-hmm. And I used to walk. And one day I just decided I'm actually I'm not going there anymore, mm. you know, because it was way too far. You know, I was always late. You know, yeah. gates are, are locked. You know, they actually, there was corporal punishment during that time. Yeah. So then my mom was like, okay, cool, dude, this thing's not going to work. We have to move you to, you know, um, a close by school, you know, the next year. Yeah. So the the next school year, so that's when I went to Ebony Park Primary School. Okay. So I started my primary school um in Tabakhone. Uh, my mom took me back yeah. at some point, you know, to go study at home. And then I the release sub A, sub B. Mm. I don't know what grade that is, sub A, sub B. <laughs> and then grade R, grade one, grade two. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. grade one, grade two somewhere. <laughs> sure. yeah. And then... Um, I did say that one Goriboni primary school. That's when mm-hmm. you know she she brought brought us back, mm-hmm. and then when she had a stable job at the time, mm-hmm. and then it was way too far, and then I missed um the school year, and then she registered me at Ebony Park Primary School. Okay. So I graduated my primary schooling at Ebony Park Primary School, oh. which is a, a neighboring township. Eh, eh, Bariki go bonding. Sure. Yeah. So not yeah. school go to bonding. So they had beautiful houses. So yeah. that's when I had you know. Better friends. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Colin Popo, you don't have, uh, like, you don't have f- fond memories because you, you said you moved here when you were still very young. Uh, what, what's some of the fond memories uh, that uh, make up your childhood uh, sh- childhood or your place of birth? Yo, you know, actually, um, the two years that I did sub A and sub B, mm. um, you know, I, I still have friends go Colin Popo and during... Um, Paseka right now, Good Friday. Yeah, you know we actually did an unveiling of my grandfather's tombstone, who I was named after. You know the okay. great Lekau Mama Oh, okay. and and I actually drove the streets. Did you cry for that name? You know, <laughs> in African <laughs> tradition, they say a child would cry for a name. Did you cry for that name, Lekau? Because you, I don't think say, so. Because yeah. because I was actually named. You know, oh, like yeah, during yeah. birth. Okay. You know, yeah, like it's yeah. in your ID. 
Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. It's in, sure. it's in the ID. So I actually drove, you know, in in our rural area, you know, just just to, you know, bring back those beautiful yeah. memories yeah, while yeah. I was still there. You know, go check out friends' um houses. Oh, come come go put tape all the hanyani. Come go mang ma. You know, so I still have those beautiful phone uh, uh, memories of when I was still uh, back home. Mm -hmm. And it's actually something that you know, um, as I grow up, I realize just how important home is for me you mm -hmm. know as much as i didn't stay that long there okay. you know I'm, I'm more of an ivory park guy okay. more than i am you know someone who grew up in in limpopo mm -hmm. but i love limpopo so much because sure. in Velapi, in Velapi, <laughs> yeah. you know that's where i actually sure. come from you mm. know so in your childhood obviously uh you grew up uh, before the dawn of democracy yeah uh how has apartheid uh, affected you as a young uh, black person during the time at the time you know there is one death mm. that happened you know my my older brother say me i'm used to do drama go school long and yeah. and they used to act uh, you know um i'm struggle heroes you know steve b Cobb, chris honey you know they, they they used to act as as, as those guys yeah. and i was still young but my my, my older brother you know once came back to school and or, or coming back to, from from playing and he was crying you know yeah. it's like so and so has passed on i don't remember if it was steve biko mm -hmm. or if it was chris han because yeah. i was still yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so but i have that memory you know of him you know mm -hmm. doing the poems so he was that sure. guy he saw himself as a struggle hero <laughs> yeah but he was still young as uh, himself as well you know yeah. but i don't have much mm -hmm. um because you know when i was you know I was actually mm -hmm. um, after um, 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 democracy, you know, sure. post-1994. That's mm -hmm. when, but I, I remember the Inkata ANC things in, in Alexandra. Although yeah. I was still young then, yeah. but I remember there were a lot of guns. And, and where I come from, Ivory Park, mm -hmm. almost every hour there used to be a gun shot. Yeah. You know, so that is what I, I, I remember a lot. Mm -hmm. But obviously... I like to believe that, you know, we still have a long way um, mm -hmm. to go as a country, you know, post-apartheid, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, personally, I never really experienced it because I was... I was sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm not like MT. MT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. MT was hit by avocados. So sure. Now I don't have it. Yeah. Any. <laughs> All right. And you didn't throw any stones at the uh, end of it. <laughs> I, I, don't protest, remember, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Sure. Could so, have happened. Could yeah, have could happened. happened. Yeah, yeah, sure. So if we may just look at uh, the time... Uh, in your childhood and now yeah. in your hometown, are there any significant changes? I'm not really, man. You know, the one thing about our um, our parents, especially our grandparents, mm -hmm. you know, because Limpopo, uh, that's my grandmother and my grandfather's house. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, I was actually talking to my uncle and saying, yeah, we have to fix these things. But there are so many things of sentimental value, sure. you know, that my grandmother would have, you know, that um, her husband left there. So it's almost still the same sure. because they, you know, like um, they, they mm -hmm. hold on to the memories of their marriage, of where mm -hmm. they come from. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but there isn't much that has changed um, except that a lot of people have actually left you know, the rural areas oh, move yeah. to a little bit of the more urban areas. Like, like yourself. <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people actually sure. left after us. So yeah. people would leave Kamamabulo to go stay in Hatoka mm -hmm. or to go stay in um, Tef. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm um, leaving the rural like um, mm -hmm. um areas and then to go stay in them. Not necessarily moving to Jobek, sure, but, sure. but even in Limpopo, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they, they have left. Oh, so. Yeah. So that makes that the place to not have much more development, mm -hmm. you know, because now people are, you know, moving closer to town. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's still the same, man. Still yeah, the same. You yeah. know, the houses, my grandmother's house is still the same. You know, although now it's so small. It was big when I was young. Yeah. But now, like, it's sure. so small. It looks yeah. like it has shrinked, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's still the same. Not, not much development has actually happened there. Yeah. Still the same. And if you were to lay a hand, how would you contribute to change the status quo? Um, one of the things, um, you know, in my in, in the power that I have, the little mm -hmm. power that I have, mm -hmm. is to obviously through motivation. You know, I I I like to believe that in the space that I'm in, mm -hmm. and as a businessman, you know, I can be able to just stick to what I do and what I know best, and okay. say, you know, let's just motivate, you know, those ones mm -hmm. that are coming after us who are entrepreneurs, you mm -hmm. know, those who are you know close to giving up, those mm -hmm. who are not seeing the light, mm -hmm. so. I don't have obviously like um, the financial capacity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to go there and, and put a tar road or 
to paint people's houses but i have a voice to actually um yeah. you know those who come from where, where i come from because sure. my story becomes more relatable mm. because they know what the cow comes from here mm-hmm. you know therefore whenever whatever that he says to us that we we can do to get out of here it's like valid. he did yeah. you know it's it's way too relatable more mm-hmm. than any other person so that is what i do you know um constantly my social media is actually dedicated to that yeah, yeah. and uh, obviously that speaks to you plowing back to the community yeah. through motivation yeah. so let's just look at uh, some of the social uh, responsibility programs that yeah. you think are necessary uh, especially for the people growing up in the rurals what do you think are some of the social responsibilities that you know uh, could be able to empower like in, in the main young people yeah look um i was actually you know sitting with the nyda ceo the other day because mm-hmm. you know i i had a twitter rant you know i i, I had to kind of worst the situation on yeah. twitter you know and just talk about the frustrations that young people actually are facing mm-hmm. um in regards to business startups you know if i were to post a picture of myself right now you know mm-hmm. at least um 20 30% of the people there are looking for jobs they're looking for opportunities from mm-hmm. me you know what i mean sure. so and then i directed my frustrations to you know those mm-hmm. at the at the highest level you know mm-hmm. of power to say mm-hmm. nyda sure. can we please be able to just um do something mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. you know this so yeah man i think that um having to to um position ourselves and then mm-hmm. I especially and and it has to come from the right place mm-hmm. you know it has to like you have to be in the right mindset and then not do it for um clicks on social media sure, it has to sure. come from and the right cloud. place yeah you know yeah. um and that is where i am mm-hmm. and i'd be like okay cool now mm-hmm. that i have established myself i have built this business mm-hmm. what is it that i can do because now i see that you know it's not like in 2019 when i posted a picture everyone liked it and say yo you are inspiring yeah. now people are saying please share you know mm-hmm. please offer jobs you know so now i have to be a channel that can direct people in the right directions in mm-hmm. terms of entrepreneurship in terms of jobs so and not doing it for cloud sure. you know and yeah man i think i think that's where i am and mm-hmm. that's um my position right now in society mm-hmm. and what i'm willing to do also i just adopted you know my my former high school at Glen Swanee secondary oh, school okay and and i said to myself i went to that school and i didn't have you know Um, the school is in Ivory. Okay. In Ivory Park. Park yeah. Um I didn't have, mm-hmm. you know, CV's clothes. So um to raise um funds, you sure. know, during CV somebody like, come wearing your home clothes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of kids to this day they don't have, you know, um school uniform, they don't have shoes. So how can I plow back with the little <laughs> voice that I have? I can say I'm adopting the school and there's no student in that particular school but can you know go to school without school shoes you know mm-hmm. it's it's on me and mm-hmm. it's not something that i'm you know too loud about because sure. it's between me mm-hmm. and and the school yeah sure and you know what they always say blessed is the hand that gives yeah, and the absolutely. one that receives yeah. sure so let's look at uh, your personal life are yeah. you are you married um, if not uh, what's your take on marriage um marriage is a beautiful institution man mm-hmm. you know um and and that is you know a foundation mm-hmm. you know a, a lot of people you know in business mm-hmm. who I, i i work with you know that i look up to mm-hmm. you know they are within um um that institution but mm-hmm. yeah i'm just going through my divorce so yeah i was married okay yeah any children yeah i have two beautiful kids okay yeah i have two beautiful kids yeah yeah all right so in that um particular um, institution yeah lately people perceive marriage in 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 different ways yeah. like you've said it's, it's a good institution yeah your view on people who are divorcing mm-hmm. would you say the they are bad people i definitely wouldn't know because each and every person it's like it's like dating man yeah obviously you cannot compare marriage to dating but it's it's yeah. coming together of 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 two people mm-hmm. and sometimes things don't work out you know mm-hmm. i'm not a topic expert sure. um but yeah i think i think you know people go through 
you know, what they go through and um, they compromise. And then sometimes they feel like they can't compromise any anymore. And then they dis- they, they make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm not a topic expert. Sure. So, yeah, I, sure. think, I think, yeah. Yeah. What's your take on uh, education? Do you think uh, it's a valuable thing that uh, the young people should pursue? Absolutely, man. You know, I was actually sitting down the other day. So my story, you know, is a, mm-hmm. a, um, a part of a case study at Gibbs. And I was giving a a lecture at UJ the other time, and they were writing an exam about my story. Okay. And and it just just you know gave me goosebumps as to you know how far mm-hmm. one can actually go without education, and it made me realize just how important you know it is at some point mm-hmm. because you know sitting there in front of you know third year students you know who are studying marketing, and I was like I'm not even a topic expert myself. I'm just sharing my story of sure. where I come from and everything. Mm-hmm. And it just made me want to go back to school, you know. And I was like, okay, I just want to, you know, conversate with someone and then just check um, which line, you mm-hmm. know, of education I'd like to be more comfortable in. Not necessarily, obviously, to look for a job, but just to, you sure. know, emancipate my mind, mind. You know, just yeah, to sharpen yeah. my mind. Sure. You know, either marketing or um, business management, you know, that is where I'm looking at right now. So education is so important, man, because mm-hmm. it allows you, it, like, it, it opens your mind, mm-hmm. you know, and it gives opportunities as well, you know. Um, we are we are, we are are going through an era right now whereby um, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, which is a good oh, thing for their, yeah. for their economy. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of those entrepreneurs would actually look down on those mm-hmm. who are just going to school and they don't want to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they don't want to start businesses, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but they actually just want to work. And sure. I'd, I'd like to say, you know, education, you know, gives that foundation, you know, for those people who mm-hmm. who want to obviously, you know, emancipate their minds, you know, yep. open, sharpen their minds and also um, to, you know, um, get better paying jobs. Yeah. You know, like our parents used to force us to, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, 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 is your, what is your highest form of uh, qualification? NQF level four of um, civil engineering. Oh, yeah. Okay. And an FET college. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And, you know, often... Uh, Tivet colleges are underrated, and yeah. that's where a lot of people uh, have graduated. We have civil engineering engineers who have studied actually from uh, Tivet colleges. Yeah, absolutely. All. Yeah, so it's, it's very important. It's a very it's it's a high it's an institution of higher education as well. So it, it shouldn't be looked down at. So if you you may uh, give a few tips on mm. how to establish a concrete and a successful business. Obviously, looking at the pays and rate at how your business is moving, how would you encourage someone or what would mm. be, what would you say is the good recipe mm. for success when, when you're starting a business? Um, <clears throat> we always actually um, overlook luck as well as an element of, okay. of business as well. Mm-hmm. And being at the right place at the right time, you know, also counts as well in terms of business. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, you know, I, I, I know what my Christians are going to say, oh, no, 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 <laughs> you know, I'm a Christian myself, okay. but, you know, um, I also believe in luck as well. Okay. So one of the most important thing, like the first thing is for you mm-hmm. to start, okay. you know, it's for you to start, you know, oftentimes we just sit down with great ideas okay. and then we're like, yeah, I'm waiting for the right moment. There'll never be a right moment. Okay. You know, the first step is for you to actually start regardless of how big the idea is. Sure. You know, we're sitting here today and then we're saying, mm. you know, there are no funders, there are no... But we also have um, cases of people who were actually funded, you know, who actually didn't have, mm-hmm. you know, um, much in their books, you know, in their financials, yeah. but they had a great idea and luck uh, made them to meet, you yeah. know, investors and funders as well. Mm-hmm. You know? So one of the most important things is for you to start. And yeah. wherever and whenever you are. So... One of the the things that actually drove me and then pushed me was poverty, right? Mm-hmm. And we were so poor at home. And then I looked at my situation and said, what is it that I can do where I am? Do I want to be a billionaire? Yes, of course. Sure. You know, but how do I get to this billionaire status? Mm-hmm. You know, like, do I have to go and say, here's a mining proposal, give mm-hmm. me land? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chances are that's not going to happen. But how you know? do you start? You spoke about starting, just start. How do I start? This is, this, this <laughs> is how you start. Sure. So you have to be 
Um, there's always a starting point. Mm -hmm. That is my point. There's mm -hmm. always a starting point. Whereby you are sitting, you are in Ivory Park, you are in a shack, you don't have nothing. Okay. And then you look around where you are in your community. Mm -hmm. What is it? Because entrepreneurship is all about spotting an opportunity and then closing a gap, right? Okay. So you have to be in that space and then be able to have a skill enough for you to spot an opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's something in our space right now is called the white space whereby we have bigger brands like Nike, Under Armour, mm -hmm. you know, they are filling the bigger markets and uh, the bigger market spaces, mm -hmm. whereby a brand like Drip, smaller, it can check around, you know, opportunities of, you know, those smaller sure. spaces that the bigger brands cannot take, but mm -hmm. big enough for Drip to actually take. Mm -hmm. That is being an entrepreneur, you know, um, even at the highest level, you still have to, you know, navigate through the spaces sure. and say, what is the gap here? So you are in a shack. And then you have to um, scan around where you are and say, what is it that I can do? Mm -hmm. T-shirt, a branding business, how much capital will this business um, need from me? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's cool. I need 10,000 rents. Okay, sure. how do I now raise 10,000 rents? You know, you borrow the money you from friends, whatever. But as long as you're going to have a proper idea and yeah. a starting point, and that is doable. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, you know, our issues is that we're going to dream about one million rents. Mm -hmm. And then you don't even, in your second, there's not even one person who actually has. Yeah. And the banking system also is, doesn't favor us as sure, well. You know sure. what I mean? So you have to look. And that is what we were doing. You know, like when I started Black Smoke back in 2003, mm -hmm. I started, um, I'm suing torn denims. And I was selling them. So I was recycling uh, clothing, oh, you know, without yeah. no capital. So mm -hmm. that is how I raised, you know, um, capital, even though it wasn't 100,000 rands. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be able to sell that gin maybe for 250. But okay. now I have raised capital of 250. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's a business model, there's a gap, you know, but then how do I close it? How far can I take it to a billion rand? That's that's where you start, okay. you know, because there's a market already. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of times we actually overlook, you know, where we are and then you always want something that is far. And it's also okay because there are other people who are willing to risk finding ideas. Sure. But, you know, luck, like I said, luck. also plays a huge role in that you yeah. Know, phase. Yeah. So what inspired you to, to, to come up with the concept drip and uh, ultimately owning such a successful brand? It's a lot of things, man. I just mentioned now, you know, 2003, Black Smoke, you know, mm -hmm. that is what, um, 18, 18, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, or 20, 20 years ago, okay. actually. So I started um, my first business 20 years ago. Okay. You know, in 2003. And it was called Black Smoke. I was doing designs. And throughout my high school career, mm -hmm. that is what I was doing. And what inspired me... So from, you started this when you were in high school? Yeah, when well, I was in high school. Okay. So what inspired me, you know, from starting a business was actually poverty. You know, I was in a space whereby I couldn't um, be able to get money from anyone. Sure. You know, my mom is unemployed. She's mm -hmm. raising four kids. You know, there's no way mm -hmm. I can just bother that women. But what is mm -hmm. it that I can do? Mm -hmm. And I started, you know, like I'm reading books, you know, about, you know, Herman Mashaba, you know, Petrus Mutsepe, studying all the great business people, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, Maponya. And sure. I was like, okay, cool. These people, we all have something in common, which is mm -hmm. opportunities, which is starting from mm -hmm. where you are and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, my first business is going to be without capital. Sure. And that is when I started Black Smoke Designs, where I was just designing denim, shoes, T-shirts, and everything. Mm -hmm. So my entire high school, I was just that guy who was way too stylish, who was designing shoes with yeah, yeah, crazy yeah. hairstyles. Oh. You know, post high school, I did a cleaning services company um, we are with um, one of my partners, uh, my Peter, we did motion free studios, a, a photography business. Mm -hmm. We did um, cash for scrap. We did, like, I did a, quite a lot of things just before Drip. Yeah. And the cleaning services um, was actually the last business that I did before I went to Ekurlene West College in Tembisa, mm -hmm. where I actually studied um, the civil engineering. And th the reason why I actually went to school was that my business needed a lot of capital. So, oh, so I was yeah. renting cleaning services machine. I was renting buckies yeah, yeah, yeah. as well for me to go clean. So, I, like, I, I was sharing my profits with, you know, people that I was... I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. getting these products from mm -hmm. and these equipments from. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, one thing that's going to make me to get capital because no one is, you know, willing to fund or anything. Yeah. Um, I have to go to school, study for three years, invest, you know, a, a, in education for myself for three years, yeah. and then go look for a job, get a salary, um, invest my salary mm -hmm. uh, into savings, and then from there start a business. 
So 2013, I went to school, you know, at Ekuren West College. Okay. And then 2015, late, I got a job, you know. But obviously, as a, as a young man, at some point, sure. I actually forgot, yeah, you yeah. know, bought myself a mini Cooper. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Typical of yeah, a yeah, young yeah, man. Yeah. You know, roaming the streets of Bramfontein, mm, you, know, sure, you know, sure. in a nice mini Cooper. Sure. But you So know, you were able to raise that much to afford a mini Cooper because... Uh, Mini Cooper at the time, it was, you know, uh, top of the range. It was the most uh, uh, desired uh, car. Yeah, yeah, but, but I obviously didn't Africa. buy it cash. You oh, know. sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I qualified for credit. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, and during my business um, times, I actually yeah. needed credit in order for me to um, buy this yeah. cleaning, um, a, a carpet cleaning extraction machine, oh. you know, which was, at, I think, 12K at the time. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't have that. Yeah. But now I'm employed now. Um, we're able to pay sure. three point five four thousand, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, on, yeah. on on this mini Cooper, sure. and um, that gap of me forgetting and everything, losing my job, and then now you know the car being gone and re remembering exactly why mm -hmm. I went to school, mm -hmm. and now I'm in the far much more worse situation, mm -hmm. you know, than I was, you know, before before getting the job and going to school mm -hmm. and having to start other business again, like the poultry. Um, the Shisanyama, yeah. and eventually leading to drip. So just before drip, I have a sixteen-year-long um um business yeah. um um career, you know, and all of those businesses failed, and each and every time I started a business, when it failed, I attempted again. Sure, you know. So so, yeah. so that explains that you know, no success that there's no success that comes overnight, and I want to draw your attention to this. So you were able to secure. Um, a credit to buy a car, but yeah. when you were seeking uh, funding as a as in a startup capital, you couldn't secure. Why is the situation like that? It's is it's it's very much easy for the banks to finance a car, but yeah. for black people, if you go there and say, uh, "I have a land, I want to build a property," yeah. chances are they won't give it to you. What's your take on that? Because you were saying you had a plan, but you couldn't get the the, the capital you needed from obviously the the banking sector. But why? Yeah. What do you think is so easier for the banks to be able to give away uh, scholar or, or like a dining a mini Cooper? <laughs> Let me ask you a, a question. Yeah. If you were the bank, what would you do right now? Would you um finance the business that doesn't have a proper track record of financing? Or would you fund this car that actually makes you money because you're actually both in it, whereby you're actually making more money and you are um, lending me the money mm -hmm. to buy the car against my salary, mm -hmm. you know, which is guaranteed that every month, you know, yeah. I'm going to lock this guy, you know, for the next five years. You'd obviously choose the car because there's no track record that this thing can actually be scalable. But that's the problem with capital. If it yeah. was a white man, they would have given them the, the, the funding. So it goes back to the issue of race. If you are black, sometimes... Yeah. The, the taps are being closed for us to be uh, to be able to access funding. So mm -hmm. I think personally, my views on uh, access to funding, uh, I think we need transformation because the banking sector is so biased towards the, the black majority. The brand over the years, it grew steadily. Yeah. At this point in time, where is, 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 is drip? Is it doing well or is it stuck? <sighs> What, yeah, what, what is the, the, the current situation? You know, each and you know, there are um, there are so many different mm -hmm. um phases of business, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um there is the starting phase yeah. whereby you have to come up with strategy, you know, in the market, who's your target market, um, how are you going to enter market, you know, with what product, mm -hmm. da, 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 da da. And then it happens and then it pop, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, it gets to be successful. And then there is the point whereby, you know, you now have to take it to the next level as well. And then and then they say, what got me here won't get me there, sure. you know, in, in business. So smart enough, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm the guy who has, you know, failed for 16 years. And sure. I know, you know, um, I'm symptoms of something that's going to work mm -hmm. or something that's not going to work, you know. And I'm able to, you know, um, re react, sure. you know, based on, you know, what I see. So even in two years mm -hmm. later, after studying Drip, you know, sure. I sat down and then I looked at, at the brand and I was like, okay, cool, Drip, this is where you are. You mm -hmm. have, what, two sneakers only. 
you have uh, at the time i think we had mm-hmm. 18 17 stores and i was like but where are you going you know sure. as a brand are you going to be sustainable yeah. you know we have a lot of you know other brands that are popping in mm-hmm. you know from um other platforms like alibaba just rebranding and then just you know putting into the market and i was like is this going to be sustainable for us sure. you know as a, sure. as a as a business you know mm-hmm. for us to reach 100 years you know which is my goal you know f- to build a business that's going to outlive me mm-hmm. and obviously if you want to build a business that's going to outlive me you have to put in the fundamentals and the mm-hmm. work you mm-hmm. know in place the processes and the systems mm-hmm. that make you you know to be sort of you know um um, the business not relying on sure. you anymore, sure. but it having you know um, systems and processes that can operate without. Like I'm sitting here with you, sure. I didn't go to the office. The the stores are opened, all 25 oh, of them. Systems are in place. Systems are in place, so sure. you have to be able to sit down and say, mm-hmm. how am I going to make this thing to work even when I'm not there? Okay. So and we also said, um, profit wise and growth wise, yeah. you know. Are we going to be able to survive, mm-hmm. you know, 100 years? Mm-hmm. And w- the answer that I got was no. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the business diagnosis and said, so what is it that I must do in order for me, you know, to to grow the business up until 100 years? You know, I'm, I'm wearing this thing and this is a compression for gym. Mm-hmm. So the idea um, then hit me to say we have to diversify our offering. And not only just diversifying our offering, but we have mm-hmm. to take in a new route. At the time, we had a perfume, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to go that route of more lifestyle with okay. perfumes. I then said, for me, mm-hmm. is to build a functional, you know, brand and and product. Oh, yeah. You know, and obviously the foundation of our business was the liquid sneaker. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm so sad that I couldn't bring it. Um, and the liquid sneaker, which is the first drip sneaker, which is a sports lifestyle sneaker. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a sports sneaker, and it's way too comfortable. And it's actually here. It's actually uh, this one. These are the, the sneakers. Oh, the sneaker. what by the leadership? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Sure. So that is the first drip sneaker. And then mm-hmm. I um, sat down with the team, you know, mm-hmm. and as the CEO and as a strategist, so we said, okay, where are we taking the business? Mm-hmm. We said, we have already set a tone and a foundation sure. around this type of sneaker. Mm-hmm. It's comfortable. People wear it. You can see, you know, it's a functional sneaker. Mm-hmm. And then we said, how about we actually build a functional brand, mm-hmm. you know? And then that's why I'm wearing this compression, you know, to go to gym. You know, we started working around, you know, the offering, you know, our logo changed. We said, um, with this current logo, it's going to be our heritage logo. And mm-hmm. then let's have a new logo that's going to oh. have a symbol that symbolizes, okay. you know, just the brand. Sure. By virtue of just seeing um, the fluidity symbol. You know, mm-hmm. it's called the fluidity symbol, okay. drip fluidity. Sure, you know? sure. And then it's 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 a symbol of drip to say, yeah, that is um drip. It's it's it's, it's sports like, yeah. you know. And then that's how we actually changed the strategy. And then we said, and in the market, where are we going to live? You know, we're going to live in sports. We're going to live in um sports lifestyle as well. Yeah. And then we identified, you know, sporting coins that we can actually tap into. Mm-hmm. We sponsor Morocco Solos. You know, we sponsor the Lions Cricket Club in terms of footwear. And then also going, you know, global, you know, with another sporting code as well. Mm-hmm. So that is how we diversified and then um, aggressively so, you know, tap into the market and say, we're going to take over mm-hmm. this part. And then we positioned ourselves as a, you know, sports lifestyle brand, sure. you know, with that makes functional products and innovatively so, mm-hmm. you know. So we, we, we sit down and say, what type of innovation can we put, you know, into our products and not just be another brand? Sure. And then so that mm-hmm. we can we can see the effort that we put in um, building our products. Yeah. The so, innovation, the creativity and all. Yeah. yeah. So that was so so that was two years ago. So we sat down, you know, did our research, went through documents, invited other, you know, people, doctors mm-hmm. who say what type of running sneakers can we do? So we actually build, you know, a a, a whole new brand bible, mm-hmm. you know, and then um, for two years, you know, up until we actually launched um, uh, mid this year, mm-hmm. you know, with four new sneakers. And then we also um, launched our new logo. And then our stores are no longer just going to be the smaller 100 uh, square meter stores. Okay. They're going to be your 350 square meter stores, oh, you know, right. that tap into like um, sport um, gym equipment, active wear. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we have now actually expanded the Yeah, uh, I, the, the saw, business. I saw sweaters. I saw... Yeah. Um, what do you call this? Gymming. Out yeah, 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 yeah. F- I mean, a wear. Yeah. So you're yeah, actually evolving. And yeah, uh, like we never had caps. Cap, so this yes. is a cap. And actually, you know, um, 
uh, this cap is a, is a functional cap as well. We didn't use a normal material. It's actually mm. a, a cap that absorbs sweat. Oh, it's okay. used using um, French terry material for, for of a hoodie, mm -hmm. you know. So that material easily absorbs sweat, you know, when sure. you're at gym. So we actually went and then, you know, did our research and said, what type of brand do you want to so, yeah. have? Yeah. yeah, when you started, the idea was to own sneakers, but now you're yeah. expanding. And now when you explain um the gym uh, i mean feed uh where yeah i want to know so what is this dripping what are we dripping here what's dripping are we talking about sweat because when you started it was sneakers but now the the name of the brand mm. but like, it, it it makes more sense it's in line with uh, the the gym uh you know where because when you're sweating obviously the the, the sweat is dripping so i want yeah. to know What's dripping here? What's dripping? <laughs> so, the coming up of the name, mm. you know, one of the hardest things is actually naming a business, especially brands and products. Yeah. You know, because you have to also just play around, you know, mm. the naming and the marketing and the positioning as well. Sure. So, excuse me. So, at the time, you know, drip on social media was actually trending. Yeah. You know, the, the, the word drip, it's actually mm -hmm. just a universal word, yeah. um, which means highly fashionable. You know, okay. like, uh, you know, oh, you know swank. drip means yeah, okay. swanko, right. you know. And I realized that, you know, big corporate companies, mm -hmm. you know, would take the slangs that we use on social media and then mm -hmm. they use them in, in their own marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, actually, this drip thing is going to work because the name is short, you know, it's sure. not a long name. And then it can stick nicely on products, like you can see, it just sticks nicely, you oh, know, yeah. on, on products. It's just drip, yeah. you know, short, you know, straight to the point. Yeah. And then also is in the fashion category. Mm -hmm. And we started, you know, building, you know, marketing around it to mm -hmm. say, what is it that actually drip means, you know, mm -hmm. in our own view, mm -hmm. you know, this is what drip is, you know, I'm using apparel as well. And then also allows us to actually play around with the, you know, um, words around drip. Like our first nigga is called the liquids. Okay. You know, so you know it's drip, it's water, fluidity. Sure, sure. You know, so yeah, um, it means highly fashionable, and it's a it's a word that we actually you know ran with you know mm -hmm. for the business. Yeah, and what goes into the production? Yeah. Um, are you producing your your brand uh, locally? Your sneakers, your hoodies, and everything that you offer now. Uh, and what are some of the the challenges uh, in 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 production? Like for example. We have rolling uh, blackouts in, in, in the country. Uh, what are some of the challenges? Um, first of all, we don't have the technology and the innovation to mm -hmm. produce what we produce mm -hmm. um, here in South Africa. Okay. You know, um, we don't have the pace. We don't have the innovation. Um, like, we don't have the resources. So there's no one in the country who actually does what um, the Chinese are actually doing right now. Okay. So we actually, you know, produce in China. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a Chinese ambassador. I know I'm an ambassador of South Africa. Mm -hmm. But honestly speaking, you know, I just wish we actually had that um, um, space and factories who were able to, you know, do what the guys are actually doing that side. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our apparel, at least 50% of our apparel, we actually make it here. So I have, you know, a wing um, mm -hmm. um, which actually makes clothes on the side, mm -hmm. you know, that makes clothes for us. So I have a, a company on the side you know, that I've invested in, which is a CMT, and okay. then we're able to print and then make clothes as well. Yeah. yeah. And as a black man, uh, this is a black-owned uh, company, what are some of the challenges that you come across uh, as a black-owned uh, brand? Um, I think I'm I'm one of the lucky few. Yeah. You know, I'm one of the lucky few and who is now also a voice yeah. you know, in the space that I actually work in. Why am I saying I'm one of the lucky few is um, during the during the beginning of DREP, you know, having to go mm -hmm. from mall to mall to mall, sure. having to ask for space was one of the hardest things. Okay. You know, because you don't have track record of trading, you mm -hmm. know, you don't have financials, mm -hmm. you don't have, you know, banking statements to prove that you sure. can actually be able to pay rent for the next three to five years, you know. So... But having to get a chance, you know, from um, Newtown Junction, just down the road, yeah. um, for them to say, yeah, you can go and trade. Okay. And the Pretoria CBD. And, um, yeah, so I'm I'm one of the few that were lucky enough, you know, to actually be let into um, um, this, you know, big space that we actually sure. exist in. But, 
you know, also just entering the market. I mean, with Drip, we have, what, 25 stores, we have fish and chipses, we have, you know, um, the apparel under domain. This is actually one of my things, domains, a brand. Okay. We have two stores. Okay. And uh, I think I think we have at least 30, 33 stores in total, you know, you know, in the, the in Drip, Drip, yeah, Drip has 25, and then other brands and businesses okay. as, you know, other stores, around eight. Yeah. So... What I, I then did, you know, with um, Jason McCormick, you know, mm -hmm. who is one of my landlords, we sat down and Mamari Dazwan, who owns in Bizo Shisaja, my busy corner. Mm -hmm. And then we said, and then we actually looked at the challenges that I faced, sure. you know, with um, um being a, a come up, you know, as a brand. Yeah. And then we said, there's another Lekau somewhere who has a brand, you know, who wants to tap into the malls, but mm -hmm. it's going to be very hard. Mm -hmm. And then we said, let's create our own um, um, council. You mm -hmm. know, um, um, it's called um Township Retail Investment Summit. So it's a summit, sure. Township Re Township Retail Investment Summit. Mm -hmm. So in the summit, what we do is we say, um, let's link up the brands that are upcoming with the landlords, okay. and then with the other bigger brands. Mm -hmm. You know, like um your TFG. You know, just to learn how TFG. You know, sure. it has over seven thousand stores, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And then we say you can learn from these guys, and then we can be able to check if your if your business you know can be scaled, and then we can put it in the malls. You know, mm -hmm. two years and running right now. You know, Township Retail Investment Summit. We're able to go to the townships, and then we take in um, the mm -hmm. brands, and then we're able to you know formalize them, and then help them um, um, get into the malls for twelve months without paying rent. And then as soon as they're able to fly on their own, yeah. and then they can be tenants into, into into the malls. So we are just you know grooming and then just building the next you know drip the next um other brands as well. Yeah. So, so it was not never an easy task to penetrate into the market, the it's, fashion it's, industry. It's it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy because it's not easy, man. Um, I actually just tweeted today that given an opportunity to do this again, I, I wouldn't do it. You know, having to be in the position that I am, you know, um, I wouldn't start another business from scratch again. And that's why you will find other people, you know, call themselves investors. They, they just look at you, okay, three years running, we have done all the dirty work, yeah. okay, this is how we can scale you, and then we just make more money. Yeah. So there are other people who are looking at me who can say, okay, yeah, yeah. we have done all the dirty work yeah. now, sure. can we invest in you? Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily um, 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 start another company from scratch that we actually started a trip. Sure. You know, it's, it's one of the hardest things ever yeah. because you are constantly knocking each and every day is mm -hmm. new, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you can be happy. Like whenever getting an opportunity to be happy, yeah. be happy. Sure. Because the next few weeks can be yeah. the most yeah. hectic times ever. Yeah. You know, because of what we go through, the lack of cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, um, we 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 work with um ports and imports. Yeah. You know, like your products can be stuck at the ports there. You know, due to many other reasons. You know, can have stoppages and then mm -hmm. there's no trading at the stores and then now you have, like you like cash flow. So those are the real things that we go through whereby like me, while we have 350 employees across all our stores, sure. you know, you are looking at, you know, it's, it's a serious matter. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's above me, mm -hmm. you know. So each and every decision, each and every day matters. So it's not an easy thing yeah. to actually do. So I definitely wouldn't do this thing again. Yeah, yeah. Never. Because, you know, starting something is, is, is never easy. It's like never. building a house. Starting the foundation, you'll find concrete, you'll find yeah. rocks there. So obviously starting something from scratch, it's, it's not That's easy. That's why they also advise that if you actually have the money, buy a house and build. <laughs> sure, exactly the point. Yeah. So now, um, you have obviously established yourself yeah. uh, as, a, as a brand, Drip, yeah. in, in, in South Africa. Um, looking at the high in unemployment rate in our country, how have you contributed in job creation, particularly looking at uh, young people and as well as uh, women? Yeah, man, 350, you know, across all the brands and, mm -hmm. and all the businesses that I actually own. And um, one of the key things, you know, that is so important for me mm -hmm. is to also, you know, offer other opportunities to other entrepreneurs. You know, if there's a guy who makes shoe boxes, you know, um, and if maybe I sell um, um, 10 pairs of shoes a month, mm -hmm. it means I would have contributed mm -hmm. 10 boxes to that guy. And I can recommend to my peers who 
we're also doing the very same thing. Sure. So as much as, you know, we are working around, you know, mm -hmm. the jobs mm -hmm. and then we have to also just work around the businesses that can, mm -hmm. you know, create. Because honestly speaking, I cannot, you know, create um, one billion jobs. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. But I can create um, 100 entrepreneurs that can be able to multiply what I have, you know, created myself. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the key um, um, factors that I do when I do business right now, whereby I check, okay, cool. If we're doing an event, who are we renting the toilets from? You okay. know, um, so I'm so conscious about that because I have to be able to contribute to other entrepreneurs as well. Okay. You know, as much as there are other greater entrepreneurs who allowed me into their malls, I have to also at my level also just look down and say, who else can I impact? Mm -hmm. And then the jobs are there, yes, mm -hmm. sus sustainable, we're able to, you know, pay salaries and do everything there and then grow the business and scale. But how else can we be able to, you know, help other entrepreneurs by supporting them, yeah. you know, through the journey as well. So Sure. So you are empowering both um, young people, including women, yeah. in, in, in this endeavor. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and we, we, we actually um, follow um, the, the national regulations around employment, mm -hmm. you know, how to employ, who to employ. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even even our late MD, you know, yeah. she, she was a female. She was actually, you know, the core and the center of, mm -hmm. you know, who to employ, actually. Sure. And then she was she was employing, you know, actually I once posted a picture on Twitter. Sure. And then we were sitting in our showroom at work. Mm -hmm. And there were so many women there, yeah. and people and and guys started complaining. Hey, when I got a, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. hire more women, you know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that is one of our mm -hmm. our our strategies as well, you know, to say um, we have to sure. work with as many you know women as possible. Sure. And uh, you talked about the the late uh, former MD. Yeah. Uh, her tragic death uh, might have uh, obviously impacted the business uh, in a negative way. Yeah. Uh, it must have been a huge blow. Yeah. Uh, do we know the circumstances which led to her untimely death? Yeah, I think I think um, that is public information. Um, allegedly, um, I don't know if it's alleged or, or, or how was the right way to use. But she was um, I'm, I'm shot, you know, as she was entering, you know, her home. Mm -hmm. um, 18 October 2021. Yeah, man. And you know the 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 thing about you know business is that mm -hmm. um, when you build business um, as a business, you you directly work with your employees. And then you you must always ask them to say, you know, what is it that I can do for you in order for them to be comfortable enough to do something? Mm -hmm. And that is one of the best retainment um, strategies in, in business. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to lose people. Sure. You know, we work around, you know, the people we plan around, you know, the hundred years, you know, mm -hmm. the, the hundred year plan that we have, mm -hmm. you know, people were involved in actually, you know, creating it. So having to now lose someone, you know, at that key position as a managing director, you know, who was doing, you know, the more you know, operational elements yeah. of the business. And recruiting and the recruiting, young ones. And recruiting, you know, yeah. the young ones and running the business, mm. you know, um, was, was, a, was a huge blow. Yeah. You know, that's why we never really had an MD, you know, ever after that. So I took um, both roles, you know, and I was transitioning into the chairman position because we're establishing other brands as well. Domain, Kids Republic, Drip, Root of Fame, Casper. So we're now, you know, diversifying, you know, mm -hmm. our portfolio at the time. And I was overlooking the entire portfolio of brands, mm -hmm. you know, from the chairman position. And Glenda being MD that side, you know, Casper taking care sure. of Root of Fame, you know, and other people taking care, like Tepo doing domain and mm -hmm. all the brands having their own leaders. So yeah. I was now, you know, overlooking them, looking down, you know, mm -hmm. and running the businesses. Yeah. So having to lose, you know, that, you know, key position, it was a huge blow to me personally because I grew up with her and also as as a as a work relationship, you know, as one of my, you know, people that are key in the business. Yeah. yeah. And may her soul uh, continue to rest in eternal peace. Man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, your relationship with uh, Theo Baloy, the yeah. owner of uh, Batu, yeah. uh, how would you describe your relationship uh, with him? I mean, you, the two of you are in the fashion industry. That guy's my brother, man. Sure. You know, that guy's my brother. And Drip came, I think, three years, you mm -hmm. know, actually before. It, Batu came three years before Drip, you okay. know, if I'm not mistaken, three or four years before Drip. 
Okay. So he 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 was also so drip came first. No, so what about two? But two oh, came, came first. Yeah, yeah. but two came three years before okay. trip. Three, yeah. three to four years. Yeah, and obviously, but who you know dominating the space and everything. Sure, sure. And um, we took it upon ourselves, you know, to meet, to sit down, and then start working together. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so that you don't you don't beef, you know, because we're not rappers. Mm-hmm. You know, we are we are, we are business people. Sure. You know, who have. Um, to sit down, work together, mm-hmm. and then see how we can, you know, bring the next um drip and bar to end. W- we're actually working on something very big right now. Mm-hmm. There's a picture that was trending on social oh, media. Oh, the three of you. Yeah, it was me. This? It's Sheldon. Sheldon Thatchell um, oh, owns Legends Bar. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that picture. Um, they they have over 750 employees. Okay. I also own one um, franchise of Legends Bar by myself. Okay. And then it's me, Sheldon, and then Theo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're working on something very big. So it tells you like um that behind the scenes, mm-hmm. we actually share the strategies. We share how to grow, mm-hmm. and we're also you know. You know, building something very big. You know that we're about to, sure. you know, come to launch soon. Yeah. So yeah. you are not uh, in competition with each other. You're actually complementing each other. Absolutely. You know, I always say this that your competitor is someone who is um sitting in a position that you want to take. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So and 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 the 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 brand me and him mm-hmm. and that is sitting in a position that we want to take are the global brands that are in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So I don't look sideways at his brand and say yeah. they are you know, in a position that I want to take because that is now competition because you yeah. want to remove that yeah. person yeah. Yeah. from yeah. that position yeah. and I don't want to remove him from sure. that position. There are other people that I want to remove from their position, sure. you know, which is my territory, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that is my competition, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's a beautiful competition, global competition, mm-hmm. man, sure. that we also look up to that has been existing for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. You know, we are just small players right now in the market, but very, very big and small players yeah. in the market because yeah. we currently set the tone sure. of where, you know, the market is going, who is yeah. the customer, yeah. you know. So... Excuse me. So not my competition at all. Like sure. we can never compete. You yeah. know, we are we are, we are brothers. Sure, yeah. brothers in arms. Yeah, we we have we have, <laughs> we have the same problems. Sure, because I, I think uh, the two s- sneakers have changed the game in South Africa. Yeah. Because uh, the advent of uh, Batu and Drip uh, saw a lot of uh, mostly young people, even old, wearing um, those sneakers because they are sort of. Um, one size fits all, and you can wear with your suit, you know. Yeah. So it's not like it's a sport where only you can dress yeah. up, you can go to a wedding with that. So do you promote one another's, uh, another's uh, business? Do you wear a, a bad yourself? Obviously not. Okay. You know, I'm not necessarily promote because we ourselves have so much bigger work to do, you know, within within our, our, our brands, you know. We're not even, you know, taking at least five to ten percent of the South African market as it exists right now. So um having to focus on my mm-hmm. strategies, on my business, mm-hmm. but complementing one another is, is is what we do. Sure. You know. So um that is what I do and that is what he does. Mm-hmm. And we, we actually spend time together, man. You know, at least once a month we meet, you know, we just, you know, go through um, you know, notes, you know, which mall is performing better, which mall not to go to. You know, so that is what we do behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. But in terms of um having to go to, into that depth, yeah. you know, we we actually try by all means to just you know push our brains because there's sure. so much work that still needs to be done. You know, mm-hmm. by 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 us and everyone else. Sure. You know, who's also um coming. You know, um, yeah. Komarau Harun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, your relationship uh, with Casper. Uh, yeah. You once said you will buy you. Uh, is it a bank? Rolls Royce. Rolls- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is your relationship right there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he owes me Rolls Royce. Like <laughs> Especially after going through what I went through this year. You know, the economy has been bad for everyone. So, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know how he's standing there. But, you know, my relationship with um mm-hmm. with V mm-hmm. is very good. I was talking to him last night. I sure. uh, He's my business partner in, in other businesses as well, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it moved from just being a drip thing, mm-hmm. you know, to being a brotherhood and to being business partners in, sure. in other, 
you know, businesses as well. So whenever there's an opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd like to believe that I'm one of the first people he calls. I hope I'm the first, but I, <laughs> <laughs> sure. but I think I'm one of the first people that he actually calls and yeah. say, there's an opportunity here. Are mm -hmm. you keen? And I say, pass. And then he say, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do the same as well. Whenever there's an opportunity, I call him. Mm -hmm. So our relationship is very good, man. You know, we established... I'm the root of fame um, yeah. around 2021, if I'm not mistaken. But oh. I think I met him 2020. You know, he was recording any minute now. He, he yeah. was expecting his son. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I walked into studio. He was he was still recording. We sat down. He said, how can we build, uh -huh. you know, not just um, um, drip only, but how can we establish something within drip, mm -hmm. you know, that um, drip doesn't cater to. So it's more of a lifestyle brand. Mm -hmm. um and he models it you know he's a partner there as well and it's doing so well itself you know they have new sneakers there because i have resigned sure i resigned myself from root of fame okay know, so right. that they so can that, have their own those space. are some of your color, uh, business uh, collaborations yeah yeah it's a it's a, it's a collaboration yeah. that we both own oh. yeah so but that that he runs sure. you know as creative director you know he works with the mm -hmm. creatives from, from from the office at drip mm -hmm. you know to build from from the shoe box actually today they sent me a shoe box of the new sneaker that we're dropping sure. so i just see them like, oh wow you know, I don't even have yeah. you know much creative mm -hmm. um, advice um, for them. You know, Casper is in charge there; he runs it, and it's a beautiful collaboration and relationship. Yeah. Any yeah. sponsorships that you you may have secured? Do you have any that I sponsor or that that you have sponsorship that are sponsoring your brand? No, no, no. We don't have any sponsorships, man. We we, we do a lot of sponsoring. You know, okay. of of, of the, the other events. way around. Yeah, it's actually the other way around. Um, um, because of um the marketing. Mm -hmm. you know, element of sponsorships, like mm -hmm. um, doing the DSTV Delicious Things, the Morocco Solos. Yeah. So we do um, a whole lot of sponsorships, yeah. you know, um, because of promotions yeah, of, yeah. of the brand, yeah. And uh, earlier on, we talked about giving back and uh, Kiddies Republic, you yeah. operated it in Mall of the North and uh, ultimately closed down. Yeah. Uh, talk us through that. What, what, went, wrong, what went wrong there? Um, Kiddies Republic, um, very close to my heart. You know, mm. it's one of the, of the brands that we, when strategically we were diversifying and then mm -hmm. investing in other elements within, you know, retail and fashion. You know, we actually established and said, okay, cool. We're also going to be doing Kiddies clothing as well, mm -hmm. and um, we we're working on seven stores. Um, we built three of them, secured um the other four. And then opened one, mm -hmm. you know, just as when we're actually just working around, you know, establishing the business. And we just realized that, you know, it's going to need s as mm -hmm. so much money, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, at the time, you know, we couldn't secure with anyone because we are self-funded, we don't have investors, mm -hmm. you know. So we're taking from A, you know, investing in B. Mm -hmm. And then for us to be able to get it to sure. a point where we're comfortable, was mm -hmm. going to need so much money from us. Yeah. And then we realized that, you know, um, maybe the best thing is to actually just bow down and then liquidate it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we we actually liquidated it ourselves. Yeah. And then we closed shop, you know, up until maybe one day, you know. Um, it's bad news for our kids, man. Come on yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> bad yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully yeah. you're cooking something. You're going to bounce back there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Um, I'm an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and, and I, I don't moan. Um, the loss of money, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I go through failure, you know, um, and head on. Mm -hmm. And um, when that happened, you know, I was in high spirits, you know, it was, it was doing so many rounds on social media, bad trending, but I was in high spirits because that is what entrepreneurs are made for. Yeah. You know, we're made for tough times, you know, also mm -hmm. made for the good ones. Mm -hmm. You know, during the good ones, you know, we reserve something for if something bad happens. Mm -hmm. you know, that is the nature of business, entrepreneurship. Sure. And, you know, I'm having to close down the business, you know, just a few months after establishing it, you know, spending so much money, you know, investing a lot of capital in it mm -hmm. and then having to need more and couldn't, you know, um, unlock. And then we're like, okay, cool. You know, we're going to come back stronger mm -hmm. and we'll... Please. We'll, we'll, yeah, that. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I love, I love Kids Republic. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's so unfortunate, uh, but it's, it's business. Yeah, I mean, it's December now, man. We want to buy our kids clothes where are we going to get some <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, the bundle yeah. of joy it's, it's it's a good thing i mean kiddies republic was just um, a, a good brand but hopefully it will uh, raise from the ashes like you said <laughs> yeah absolutely man yeah. yeah so there's actually no one who starts a business in order for it to collapse 
or, or in order for it to be liquidated. You know, mm-hmm. even though we liquidated kiddies ourselves. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we started the business and met a lot of challenges, mm-hmm. you know, because we needed so much that we could offer, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, we ended up sitting down with the team and then we say, yeah, no, let's just uh, pack this one mm-hmm. and then hopefully one day we can be able to go back and revisit the dream because it's, it's still a dream, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So how would you s- rate, what is the measure for someone's uh, achievement uh, or accomplishment of their vision and mission what would yeah. would you say you have uh, accomplished your mission and vision or you're still going onwards and upwards yeah we're still going man yeah. um you know i i always tell people that my biggest dream in life was to actually get my mom out of a shack you know that was my biggest mission in life okay. you know to be and able you did to that. get yeah and i was able to do that and then grandmother magriza magriza was sharp was sharp yeah magriza is oh, still in her husband's house Google. no she's still a uh, uh, back at home because okay. she's old you know okay. having to confuse but you've done her something with, there yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah so um that was my biggest mission in life mm-hmm. you know to be able to get my my family out of out of the poverty mm-hmm. and 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 we're still going man you know um we we as people must have our own dreams and our own goals in life mm-hmm. and we must always just tick down you mm-hmm. know it's like it's like um the best places to visit in the world you know as people who always sit down and say yeah mm-hmm. i'd like to visit rome i'd like to visit you know um these places so life is like that as well. We need to be able to have, you know, mm-hmm. goals and mm-hmm. say, I want to be able to achieve this by, by oh, I because sometimes, you know, the pressure that we get is we actually put our ages on it. Mm-hmm. And like, like I can say, I want to be a billionaire by 40. And 40 happens, God has his own sure. plans and then doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And then now you put plan, so much pressure. He and decides. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now you're actually depressed. But as yeah. long as you have the goals and working towards something in mm-hmm. life, that is the best thing ever. As long as we have something that you're working on in life. Mm-hmm. And I have something that I'm working on, which is a strip. Mm-hmm. And I have the plans and the dreams and the goals that I'm working towards. And whatever that God gives me at that mm-hmm. moment is good, even though I'm working so hard to get to the goals. Yeah. yeah. And you talk about 100 years. Is that um, is that the lifespan of drip? Not necessarily, yeah. you know, history has actually told us that, mm-hmm. you know, a good lifespan of a South African brand is actually five years, Okay. you know, and also in South Africa, I think, they, I think they are, there are timelines whereby they say a lot of um, startups don't live up, up until I think uh, two years or three yeah. years, I actually forgot. But, you know, us, you know, when we look at the, the brands that existed that are owned by us black people, mm-hmm. they normally don't live, you know, um, until five years, you sure. know, so... Um, but we sat down and said we want to have a hundred year plan sure. and that is obviously achievable and mm-hmm. have a succession. Who's gonna come and be CEO after like uh, who's gonna mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So the plan is is actually us saying where are we planning on getting the brand to mm-hmm. and how are we planning on doing it? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and how are we gonna have our succession, mm-hmm. you know, from from where we are right now to the next hundred years, how are we planning in 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 going there? Yeah, you know, so yeah. Sure. And uh, we talked about your uh, childhood and how you grew up in the yeah. 80s. And uh, next year... I we grew up in the 90s, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were born in the 80s? <laughs> you were born in the 80s yeah. and grew up in, in the, the 90s. 90s? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So actually... And mastered the 2000s. <laughs> I mastered the 2000s. And yeah. now, uh, I want to draw your attention to this. So in 2024... The EFF has already d- declared uh, 2024 as our uh, 1994. Yeah. Uh, you would understand that uh, we are going into the national and uh, provincial elections uh, yeah. next year. What would, what what sort of changes would you expect from an EFF-led uh, government post the 2024 elections? Yeah. Um. I'm a neutral person. <laughs> I'm a businessman. You know, sure. Say, but obviously you need to vote. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course sure. I vote. Your vote matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, they, they say that um, in business, um, you can never <laughs> you can never position yourself in sports, yeah. in in religion, <laughs> and in politics. Yeah. So I'm very I'm very neutral. Yeah. But um, you know, the my dream, you know, for the country is to be able for us to look you know, after, uh, after like my dream for South Africa is for it to take care of its people. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's South Africa to be able to look back and said, you know, um, you have fought for where we are today. And then please let me just take care of you right now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, a, a, a parent's worst nightmare 
is mm-hmm. for them to raise kids and then when they are now old and then the kids turn their back against them mm-hmm. so there are people who actually fought for for this nation and then right now imagine having to look back and say you know we can't do anything for you mm-hmm. so right now we are actually now even you know fighting ourselves you know for mm-hmm. economical freedom ourselves you know sure. whereby i look back i mentioned like having a lot of people looking for jobs on my posts you know in my position what is it that i i can do yeah. is exactly what i want the, the the next person in government to be able to also do that it's not yeah. my duty and responsibility yeah. as a citizen but as a businessman yes it is mm-hmm. you know to to employ to create you know employment mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily my duty and responsibility yeah. you know it's your guys <laughs> duty and responsibility I mean, the, the writing sure. is on the wall you're speaking about economic emancipation who else in south africa is in the forefront calling for economic <laughs> emancipation. It's only the EFF, but it's fine. Now, would you encourage uh, uh, people to register and vote um, uh, in the upcoming elections? Absolutely. If you can go to to Twitter, mm-hmm. you know, and then just see um, what the reactions of people, the frustrations, you mm-hmm. know, each and every day there's a, there's a new scandal, there's a new thing that is happening, you know, and um, the only way for the people to have their voices heard mm-hmm. is through um them vo- voting mm-hmm. and one of the best ways is for you to go and register so that you can vote for the change that you want you mm-hmm. know um, um I've, I've had and and i've always got into debates with people who say nah, i'm not gonna vote man. no no, sure. no no it's bad and i'm like no actually that's when you really really have to vote because mm-hmm. that's when you are able to have a voice and decide who you want to govern mm-hmm. because we are um, um as citizens are the people who have the most power mm-hmm. and to chop and change who we want to lead our our, our country yeah so the best thing to do during these times that we are in right now mm-hmm. you know is for us to um take our our our, our pens and our fingerprints sure. and then go there and then cast a vote yeah and ladies and gentlemen uh the weekend of uh, the 18th and the 19th uh, 19th is a uh, registration weekend in November so Everyone must just go out and register to vote EFF. Now, as your as a parting shot, yeah. uh, someone who is in the streets of Mdansane, in Musina, in Ivory Park, in Khamamabolo, what would be your message of encouragement to them? I want you to be a motivational speaker now. <laughs> <laughs> someone who has given up on life and yeah. uh, they don't know, they're despondent, they don't know what to do. How would you motivate them? You have nothing to lose, you mm-hmm. know, and one of the best things when you are in that position, you know, back against the wall is for you to fight. You know, mm-hmm. they, you have you have no any other reason for you to, to actually give up, but to just continue. I mean, for 16 years, mm-hmm. that is what I was doing. And the reason why I did it was because I had nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, I could have just um, continued being a drunkard, young man in Ivory Park when I was yeah. 21, you know. Um, but I decided to say, okay, cool. I, I cannot let mm-hmm. this to happen and mm-hmm. just have a life wasted. But instead, I can just go go knock at these doors with a proposal of cleaning. Mm-hmm. What, someone will actually open one day. And you only have to be right once. Sure. You know, that's that's the beauty about entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So you can try for 10 years. You can try for four years. But it's only going to take one, just one moment mm-hmm. whereby you're actually right. And sure. it changes the entire life. Mm-hmm. So just stand up, get up, you know, keep on working. Yeah. And we work around our our projects and our businesses as mm-hmm. it's our it's, a, it's going to be the next billion rand project. Sure. Each and every business, even when it fails, have the same mindset and attitude mm-hmm. around whatever that you start. Same yeah. with kiddies. I have the same mind, mindset. Mm-hmm. Same with whatever other business. I, I still maintain the same mindset to say, this one yeah. is the one that's going to take me to the next. Sure. So wherever you are, what mm-hmm. do whatever that you can do to start something. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to take you to the next level because mm-hmm. you only have to be right at least once. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have got an inspirational story, man. I saw your tweet. I think it's a pinned tweet. Yeah. Uh, on X, yeah, you were a drunkard, my man. <laughs> you were yeah. sleeping on the floor, uh, and um, a few years later, the tables have turned. I mean, do you do you have any regrets uh, looking at how life has been on you, f- being uh, a drunkard, and now to being a successful entrepreneur? Just uh, as as a parting shot, yeah, paint a picture for us. Uh, how has it been for you? Uh, waking from being uh, moving from being a drunkard into being where you are now 
I, I, I don't necessarily think that I was a drunkard, drunkard, drunkard. I think yeah. I was just young mm. and just having fun and drinking <laughs> almost yeah. every day, you yeah. know. Yeah, slala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like after slala, after slala, after slala. And yeah. it still happens to this day. Mm-hmm. My biggest regret mm-hmm. is um when I go back to Ivory Park and I see that a lot yeah. of my peers have actually continued with that life and it has led to them being drunkards. Now they, you know, they depend on the on the on the on the alcohol for them to go by. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that they are doing except for actually just just drinking alcohol. Sure. So um, I'm glad that I actually we- have had to go through that yeah. so that I don't have to go through it again. Because I know what it feels like to not sleep, sure. you know, for, for, for days. Mm-hmm. Now I don't have to do it. I'm a responsible mm-hmm. businessman, you mm-hmm. know. So um, that was, you know, a beautiful foundation for me. I've, I've, I've seen the other side of life that yeah. if I don't take care of what I have today, you know, that part, you know, can be so close to me, you mm-hmm. know. So, uh, but I'm um, honestly speaking, I actually enjoyed, you know, during during yeah. that phase. But it was, you know, frustrations, lack of opportunities, yeah, um, um, lack of hope. But even during those times, because mm-hmm. that is what birthed all those businesses, you know, because during those times, that's when I was actually a hustler still. I was 21, sure. 2021 during those times, you know, fresh from high school, no opportunities, yeah. just, you know, young men who's trying to get into business. But, you know, um, spending more time with friends and drinking alcohol than actually working on the business things. And then it just showed that, you know, when mm-hmm. I'm now focusing more on the business and le- lesser friends, yeah. you know, it actually happens that I become, you know, a very good businessman. Sure. So, yeah. No, cheers, man. Cheers, man, to, <laughs> cheers, man, to the success of Drip. Thank and, you. And uh, all the best uh, onwards and upwards. Yeah. And uh, thank you for making time uh, on the show. Thank you so much, man, for um, the invitation and mm-hmm. um, all the best um, with um, um, this establishment and what you guys are doing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys, so thank you very much. Uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's exciting episode. Remember to um, uh, subscribe on the EFF uh, YouTube channel for Superior Logic on the EFF uh, podcast. My name is Titus Tungu. And uh, until we meet again, good day, Ekwenget. Can remember. We have arrived where the doomsayers never thought we would. EFF is at I'm going to be president of this country, whether you like it or not. <laughs>